Russ here from Wilson Land and Cattle Company. Today we're going to talk about rainfall and trying to manage for mud and the average daily temperatures and the average rainfall here on our farm. Before we get started, please subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, and hit that notification bell. So one thing I want to show you here that a lot of folks don't know um, to make a temporary gate with temporary fencing just take and spin this post around one time and you have a gate the fence won't go down I don't want my cows to be crossing the fence and I don't want them to be going underneath the fence that just teaches them how to Go through a fence because if I have a fence that goes down, I want it, I want them to stay where they're at because it happens. See there, she tried to go over it. Okay, got to move. We're going to go ahead and tear this fence here out. And then we'll talk about how we're managing for mud. It's something a lot of folks struggle with. And it's something we struggle with here on our farm as well. Fence is snapping good. winding up by hand. I only have one to wind up so I don't use my real winder. If uh, I'm only doing one. Scott, he likes to fetch the hook. need to put the water into the cows we pull our water at night in this this field here we don't have any hydrants and our hydrants clear up there so what we do is we pull the the tank out at night And we do what we call walking the hose out. At least that's what I call it, walking the hose out. Um, we make sure we have all the water out of the line so the hose doesn't freeze up on us in the mornings. I'm glad we don't have a lot of fields like this, but you know, if 
by doing this, we're still able to keep these cows out where they need to be. Okay. <coughs> Run up to this end of the field, hook the water line up. Basically what we'll do is we put the water hose under our shoulder and we just walk like this to the other end of the field at night and that gets the water out of the line. And then when we get to the other end, we'll blow on it and if it gurgles, that means we didn't get all the water out, we'll have to do it again. Okay, got the water line hooked up there. It's gonna leak because there's a little ice in it. So tighten that up. I'm gonna make sure we got water in our tank. We're gonna make sure our overflow is running pretty good this morning. We're only supposed to get up to 33 degrees today. So the chance of our water line freezing on us so we'll keep the water flowing and it is flowing just like we wanted it to our valve is froze and that's about what we want for flow Okay, let's talk about mud and pugging and all those things that we don't want in our rotational grazing system because it's going to harm our overall production for the year. Okay. Some of the things that we do to try and prevent uh, pugging is, first of all, we need to learn how to graze whenever we're in really wet conditions. <laughs> if it used to be that we would head right straight for the barn as soon as we got any kind of rainfall event, and we weren't really learning anything. So what I did is, I guess it would be the fall of 2015 we we're getting a lot of rain I'm like nah we're gonna keep the cows out there and we're gonna get it figured out and what we did is we kept the cows out there we tried different scenarios we different pasture settings different fields just different things like that to get it figured out did we screw some past paddocks up we did um, but it's part of the learning experience and now that we have learned how to do this we're able to leave the cows out in very 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 wet conditions we, we save our dryer fields for whenever it's really wet out and then whenever it's dry out we head for our our wetter fields and then on top of that then we try to keep our paddocks as square as possible and we keep the livestock moving uh, most generally whenever we have wet wet conditions we will move the cows at least twice a day and if it's really really bad out we may go as high as eight times a day today is going to be one of those days where we move them twice it rained here all day yesterday it rained here all day yesterday and it was still raining last night whenever I went to bed. So it was really wet here. We got mud puddle, we got water laying in our mud puddles and, and all that. This here is where the cows were last night. It was rained, it rained all day yesterday. 
last night i got up this morning snow on the ground it's down the 20s there is no frost you can see the beautiful manure distribution man that that is that is wonderful that uh gets that manure spread out so this spring whenever those plants start growing again those nutrients are there and available for those plants to uptake i wanted to talk about averages here a little bit on our farm so it gives you a, an idea of what we're dealing with and a lot of this stuff i don't care if you have 60 80 inches of rain a year i think you can still i know that you can still adapt some of these uh, processes and get keep your livestock out longer you may not be able to stay out quite as long but um, you should be able to stay out a lot longer <clears throat> now these uh, average numbers have actually risen since the last time I looked a couple years ago our average temperature is 47.7 average rainfall 45.5 one average days through the year that we have at least a tenth of an inch of rain 100.79 so that's almost like it rains about every 3.65 days our snowfall our average snowfall is 77 inches Days with at least one inch of snow on the ground, average 79 days. Humidity is average, our average humidity is 76 percent. Our wind speed is 20 and a half miles per hour for the average for the whole year, which is a lot higher than a lot of the other parts of the state. So that kind of gives you an eyeball, and our elevation's at 1,600 feet approximately. I think it's like 1,622 feet or something like that. So those are kind of our averages. But I feel if we still had 80 inches of rain in a year, we could still keep the cows out because there hasn't been a rainfall event in the last couple of years that has chased us out of the fields and kept us from gra not grazing. So I believe that a lot of these practices could be uh, adopted for the farms with the higher rainfall and then if you have less rainfall you know that's even better because you're going to be able to keep those girls out another thing that we've we've adopted here on the farm that really helps a lot is we've worked with giving longer rest periods on the farm those longer rest periods is going to help with water infiltration um, We've doubled our water infiltration in a lot of areas of the farm. Uh, our native warm season grass fields, we're looking at 60 inches of uh, water infiltration per hour per acre. So if we have a rainfall event with 60 plus inches of rain, we're in trouble. I don't even want to be in, involved in that type of a rainfall event. And then our cool season pastures, they're not quite as good. We're looking at about 15 inches per hour. Um, water infiltration and we've increased our holding capacity by having those longer root systems causing a lot more pores that go down into the soil so that water is able to run off whenever it quits raining um, you know one of the practices that we're using here on the farm whenever it quits raining go move the cows because the area where the cows are grazing for their from their feet walking on top of the surface they actually seal the pores off in the top of the soil and it has the potential to become muddier quicker than if whenever it quits raining <clears throat> that water is actually soaked into the soil already we can move those cows onto that other paddock and it's just as dry as a bone so you know if you're on my farm and you say well boy your ground soil your 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 ground is really dry 40% of our, our soils are considered wetland soils, and if you'd like to look it up, it's Armagh and Cabode Soil. If you look at the Web Soil Survey, Armagh soil is not considered ideal agricultural soil. And then another thing that, that happens with having a longer rest periods, our root systems are a lot larger. 
So I like to look at those root systems as a geofabric. And the geofabric will help keep you from pugging as well. Um, you know, they don't go down through the soil as much. And I guess another thing, I guess another thing that will help you out too is try and get rid of those big cows. Those big cows, you know, 1,600 plus pounds. Those girls are going to pug those fields up quicker than anything, and those are the less profitable cows that are on your farm. You know, yeah, sure, they great, they wean big calves, but um, it's less than 50% of their body weight. And a lot of these 1,000, 1,100-pound cows that we have here on our farm, they're, they're, they're raising a calf to 50%, to 60, between 50 and 60% of their body weight, they're weaning a calf. So they're weaning really nice calves, and um, you know those big cows are gonna tear things up quicker too. So keep an eye on that. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, give us a comment below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. We could really um, use your support. And to the subscribers that we have, I thank you for sticking with me here and watching the videos. Please subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you on the next video. Have a great day.